Good afternoon, everyone. First off, uh, warm welcome to all the uh, clubs, uh, the owners of the clubs, the managers of the clubs, uh, to our new uh, guest clubs that are participating in this club. Warm welcome. Warm welcome as well to uh, representatives from media here today. Uh, thank you for joining us. May I ask our fellow board uh, members to come sit with me, please? Don Longa, uh, Chris Hagedor, Phil Hagedor. If you guys were excited about the draw for the preseason cup, I'm sure you'll be even more excited for uh, today's draw. Uh, again, uh, what are the changes as far as this coming UFL season is concerned? The biggest change, obviously, is the, uh, the uh, foreign cap rule. Uh, we are now implementing a limit on the number of foreigners that can uh, play in the pitch at any given point in time. You can actually have more foreigners in your roster, but in the pitch, just five to play. Uh, that is the first uh, rule change as far as this season is concerned. Um, uh, Coco and uh, Jim will announce uh, our agreement with uh, Fantasy Football. That is likewise something new that we're introducing to the, uh, to the uh, season. Uh, they'll, they'll discuss that a little bit later on. Uh, all the games will still be at Emperador as far as uh, uh, the uh, cup season is uh, concerned. Uh, hopefully the uh, lockers in the stadium will be done before we start on October 12th. Uh, I understand, I think some of you have taken a glimpse of the lockers and they're actually uh, well done. I think maybe one issue is that you only have uh, two locker rooms. So there may be an issue for the teams that are coming up on the, on the next game on uh, how soon they can be able to use the locker rooms before the start of their game. So that, that hopefully something we can address later on. We've also, of course, expanded. The Emperor Stadium is just about finished as well. It's going to be expanded to uh, house 2,500 spectators. And uh, that's going to be something that's going to be very exciting for this season that it's finally done and finished and we can have a proper atmosphere in Empanador Stadium. Of course, not only are we expanding the 2,500 seatings, uh, we're also going to be uh, attempting to start taking to the, this this season. So that's going to be something that's going to be exciting for the clubs as well because there's going to be uh, a chance for home and away setups, especially in the league format. So we're going to be giving the responsibility for the clubs to fill up stadiums as well uh, and, and see if we can develop that home and away atmosphere at the Emperor Stadium. And of course, uh, Sir Randy Ross mentioned about the uh, FanX partnership that we've got going on. We announced it, we sent it out to you guys, but for those that are not aware of it, it is a three-year partnership with FedEx, which is a company that has branches in the uh, United Kingdom, as well as Malaysia. They are a digital sports company that is um, an expert at developing fantasy leagues in different countries. We have, we have them already set up in Finland, in India, in Hong Kong, and now we're bringing it over here to the Philippines. And it's something that we're very excited about, simply because there are no domestic leagues that have stepped into the realm of fantasy sports. So that's something new that the UFL is bringing this season and hopefully it will be something that our fans will be able to latch on to in the 2013-2014 UFL season. Alright, so UFL Cup draw, like we said, is going to get started and to explain everything to us, the format, the new groupings, and all the setup will be our assistant technical director, Sir Richie Pernama. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we'd like to welcome all the clubs, all the coaches, the players, and our fans from the media. Well, this uh, for the UFL Cup this year, we are uh, we have uh, 27 clubs participating. We have the nine first division clubs, uh, and the nine second division clubs, and nine new or guest clubs. Among them, of course is a comeback in Cebu Queen City United Football Club who took a leave of absence uh, during the last season and uh, we have Ceres Lasal Football Club from Papolo City and uh, we have the General Frias International uh, Football Club among others so quick, to, without further ado we're going to proceed with the draw for the cup we will have an elimination stage 
and uh, group stage. Okay. For the elimination stage, it's a single round robin. We will divide the 27 clubs into six groups, three groups of five clubs, and three groups of four clubs. The top three of the clubs, of the groups with five members, will, will advance to the group stage. The clubs, uh, to the knockout stage, sorry. And for the clubs with uh, four teams, groups uh, B, B, and F, the top two will advance together with the best third from among the four, uh, from among these clubs. So that will bring us to a total of 16. They will advance to the round of 16, and that will be a knockout uh, affair. And each club advancing to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. So, um, Prior to the start of our uh, affair today, I, I called on several members of the media, Sarah Selina and JP Manahan, to witness uh, me placing all of the clubs into their respective pots. We will divide the, the clubs based on their ranking from last season's league. So we will have Stalin, Global, Loyola, Kaya, Pachanga, and Green Archers in part one. And then we will have PSG, Army, Air Force, Sakaru, Union, Forza in part two. In part three, we will have Aguila, Laos, Navy, Cimarron, Japan, Dolphins in part three. And in part four, all the new clubs. So this is how we are going to go this is how the process of the draw will be. First, we will draw the group, I mean the, the, the team from the first spot, and then draw the corresponding group where they will belong. Okay? And we will proceed accordingly until we finish all the clubs in that pot, and they have their own respective groups, and then we will proceed with the next uh, pot. So, we have here part one, where we have Stalin, Global, Loyola, Kaya, Pachanga de Liman, and Green Archers United. They're all here in, enclosed in uh, film canisters. There are no marks on the film canisters. And we have the corresponding position pots, or group pots, here, again, no marks on the canisters. So, we're first going to draw one from each pot. I'm now going to draw the team. First team, Global Football Club. Global FC. And their group? Global Play. Group C. And group C. Next group. I mean, next uh, club. Next club. Skaya. Kaya SC. And their group. Kaya SC will play. In group F. Yes. F. We'll ask our board members to draw the remaining four clubs and their respective groups. Next club to be drawn by Christopher Hagedorn. Archers United. Archers United. Archers United. Green Archers. Green Archers United is in group. Randy will draw the group. A. Group A. Kindly okay. note the groups A, C, and E will have five clubs each. So, so far, Green Archer is in A, Global in C, and Kai FC in Group F. Club is? Pachanga Diliman. 
will be drawn into group.
Serious, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 Group D or Group F? Group D. They're going to be playing alongside Stalin FC. Wait, last year. <laughs> and lastly, we have Sir Jonathan Perez of Business Bear. Our new friend. Let's go, Stalin. Jonathan Perez has drawn. The final team for the second part, it is Union International Manila and they're going to be grouped in Group F and we're just going to get confirmation just to make sure no funny business going around. Group F alongside, there it is, Group F alongside Kaya FC. Alright, so two down. A couple more to go. Let's move on to the third slot of teams. We get club representatives. I know nothing. Representative from Forza Aguila FC has pulled out Aguila FC. <laughs> Aguila will be grouped. Group B. In Group B. <laughs> Simply love once again. So Aguila and Loyola group together. With fours that group together with Green Archers United. Now, for a minute from uh, Union International Manila. For a school, Manila or Japan. Manila All Japan will be grouped in Group F alongside Kaya and Jun-I-M. We call some of the team's soccer room. Some of the draw fees. Navy. 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 Group C. Navy. 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 Group. I mean, a club, then a group. The club that's being pulled out is Dolphins, Dolphins. United FC. Dolphins will be placed in Group D. Group D. So Dolphins alongside Stalin and Philippe Martin. Thank you, Ben. And we get a representative. Uh, Lawrence from Lawrence from Sebuni, Queen City. One of our guest teams for the UFO Cup. The name that has been pulled 
is Laos FC. And the trend is correct here? No. No, they can't be partnered up with Rick C anymore. So Laos will be placed in Group E alongside Fili Sakuru and Pachanga Dinamat. The final name to be pulled from the third part. Rich is going to draw it himself. The team is Simaron FC. Simaron FC will be placed in Group A alongside Green Archers United and Forza. Alright? Last round of drawing for groups B, D, and F. We get more members of the media, Evo, Diggers Prime, and so for the, last, for the last spot, we now have nine clubs in this spot. We have the six positions, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we're going to add an A, a C, and an E. All right. So it's going to be a free for all. Nine clubs to choose from, Evo. We get to start. Evo draws. Manila Hurricanes. One of our guest teams. One of the new clubs that we will see participating in the UFL Cup. The Hurricanes will be placed in Group F. So completing Group F. Kaya, Union International Manila, Manila All Japan, and Manila Hurricanes complete Group F. Seres. Seres? Seres? Seres. 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 Mendiola FC. Mendiola FC. Mendiola. A club with a lot of history. Group E. Roy, please. Mendiola FC, 991. Has been placed alongside Pachanga de Man, Team Soccer Room, and Laos. Manila G. Manila G. Also in the new clubs that will be featuring in the UFL Cup. Manila GT have been drawn into Group A. Group A. Alongside Green Arches, Forza, Cimarron, and Manila GT. Justin Valentino of Kaya. Justin Valentino of Kaya FC. Justin has drawn Manila Tala FC. Another one of our guest teams for this competition, Manila Tala FC, has been drawn into Group C. Can we ask Ali Go of uh, Ceres? Ali? Sir, Ali Go of Ceres FC. Of course. Sir Ali Go, representative of the reigning National Club Championships winners, Ceres, La Salle FC. The FA Cup Champions. Oh, Ceres. He's drawing his own cup. Ceres, master of your own fate, sir. Ceres. Has drawn itself into Group C. Ooh, interesting. Group C 
alongside Colombo, PSG, Philippine Navy, and Manila Tala FC. match naman yan, PFF. There you go, folks. Group C is going to be dangerous. Can I ask a representative from General Trias? From General Trias, we have a representative from them. Or from Army. They're all inside. Maybe you get Armand from Blue Guards. Armand. You get Sir Armand from Blue Guards. Sir Armand. From one of our new teams, the Blue Guards. Let's see if you draw yourself, sir. Looks like a money. Sir Armand has drawn Bright Star FC. Bright Star, one of the new clubs. Bright Star will be drawn in Group E. All right, so Group E is now completed with Pachanga de Mal, Team Soccer Group, Laos FC, Mendiola FC, and Bright Star. Mark Cristino. Mark, Mark. Yeah. Well, GMA and sometimes ABS CBN. I love it. I'm in And sometimes Soccer Central. He's all around this guy. Mark Castillo has John Hookards. Group B. Group B. Group B. Group B. Group B has been drawn. So the Blue Guards will be playing alongside Stallion, Philippine Army, Dolphins United. Okay, last two. I will ask our board members to draw. All right. So it's either group Final two. We'll start off with Chris. Or GPI. Second and last team. We're going to draw this together. Some of the teams that we are returning, or that are returning so, to so the Dong, Dong and Phil, whoever Phil shows will be part of Dong. That's a group. And then Randy and Chris. Okay. okay. The last two clubs are? Last two clubs are? General Shias and Cebu. Cebu Queen City has been grouped in Group A and General Diaz in Group B. All right, so if you take a look at the monitors nearest you, these are the groupings for the UFL Cup. Obviously, eyes will be drawn towards Group C, where Global and Ceres, the two big clubs that are going to be going at it, along with PSG, Philippine Navy, and Manila Tala. Group B is babe, or not? Group D has got a nice... Okay, so to recap, we have Group A, Green Archers United Football Club, Forza Football Club, Simaran Football Club, Manila Jeepney Football Club, Cebu Queen City United Football Club. Group B, we have Loyola Football Club, Air Force Football Club, Aguila Football Club, and General Trias International Football Club. Group C is Global Football Club, PSG Football Club, Philippine Navy Football Club, Manila Sala Football Club, Ceres Lasalle Football Club. Group D, Stalin Football Club, Philippine Army Football Club, Dolphins United Football Club, and Group Guards Football Club. Group E is Pachanga de Leman Football Club, Team Sapuru Football Club, Laos Football Club, Mendoza FC 1991 and Bright Star Football Club. And finally, Group F is Kaya Football Club, Union International Manila Football Club, Manila All Japan Football Club, and Manila Hurricanes Football Club. All right, so there you go. All six groups are done and finalized. The next is coming up will be the UFL launch. Uh, the, the games will begin on October 12th, and uh, there will be some lineup changes until that time comes around, until the 10th of October, when the final window closes.
So there still might be some chopping and changing from the clubs that you see uh, in the preseason already, but this is how they're going to set up and how the teams are going to play for the first few weeks of competition. So we will be looking forward to seeing all of you at the Empedore Stadium. Of course, we're going to be joining up once again before uh, the actual uh, games get started on the 12th. We'll be back here at Skating Mice probably for the UFL launch. But uh, yeah, so the, all the information that you guys need are here. And of course, uh, all the team members that have made their way over here, we will ask that you guys stay for a moment, enjoy some food and some drinks, and we're going to have members of the media have an opportunity to talk to each and every one of you regarding the UFL Cup, the fixtures, and what you guys feel uh, about your new groupings. All right? So um, unless uh, you guys have any questions for the members of the, uh, of the board, and also from assistant Technical Director Richie Ganado. We'll start off with Bob Guerrero. In the original literature, there are 28 teams. So the, uh, the 28 team, the, the team that didn't that move through and join is no man. Did they give a reason for their not joining up? Uh, basically, they uh, found it difficult to comply with the uh, foreign cap rule. Uh, I don't know if it, uh, it's been discussed already, which in terms of uh, in terms of their request for an exemption, uh, what the league has granted is basically for them to be allowed to move down to the second division uh, during the league. Uh, but as far as their request for exemption of the foreign capital for the cup, uh, that was uh, not granted primarily because we wanted everyone to have a same uh, uh, level playing field as far as the cup is concerned. Any other questions for the media? For the board members and assistant technical director, Richie Ganawa? What, what, what are the play dates during the week? What days of the week are they playing? What dates of the week will the UFL Cup be taking place? For the elimination round, we're looking at Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Primarily because we want to finish our elimination round by uh, November 12th, or before November 12th, where we will already start with our round of 16, and the round of 16, we're working on having the round of 16 for the knockout stages televised. So we're going to go back to our Tuesday, Thursday schedule, come the knockout stages. So we're going to start with our knockout stages uh, sometime November 12th. The, the target for the final is December 5th. Roy? Roy, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, last, uh, one, uh, why if there was the exemption granted given the choice of the card for the price? The question is why wasn't the exemption granted? Because no man's like the history has the issue. Given the history of no man's as a founding member of the UFCA, they were under the cap exemption. Which is what we considered for the exemption for the league. You know, but, uh, again, the league is, is different. You have all second division teams playing uh, together, and you have the first division teams playing together. For the cup, it's mixed. You know, so obviously, if you grant an exemption to one, and you have 27 other teams, it becomes even more complicated. Yeah. So uh, the decision was uh, not to grant an exemption as far as the cup is concerned. Any other questions? All right. Fixtures will be announced by next, by next week, according to Sir Michi Ganaba. <coughs> to tell you frankly, we, well, we already had a fixture prepared uh, prior to this, but we had 28 clubs in mind. And it was just this morning that we found out that Nomads will no longer play for the Cup. That's why we, we are going to revise our fixtures accordingly and we will send them out as soon as we can. But definitely, um, rest assured that we will fast track uh, the preparation of the fixtures. We are just also waiting for a meeting with the BFF and the national men's team so we can coordinate our schedules. Okay? Uh, this is our way, this is UFL's way of helping the national team in its preparation for the Challenge Cup next year. So no? uh, Will there be any one-ticket schedule with the uh, national team, especially in 
the feast cup has been scheduled for 11 15. And you're going to open on the 12th. Peace Cup is scheduled for 2015. That's why we are still waiting for that meeting. Uh, we, are, we, are, we have been in touch with Mr. Dan Palami and with the PFF so that we can iron out our schedules accordingly. So, not in the short cut, ever? In the short cut, we are targeting that because we, we, have to, we have to, it's a give and take. No? Um, we have to explain to them where we're coming from because we have to understand that our uh, Schedule is also tight. You know? It's really very, very tight. We want to finish before Christmas break. We want to. We don't want to end our cup December 21. You know, it's too close. It's it's really cutting it too tight. That's why we we have to explain our side also to the PFF, and we have to hear their side. And that meeting has still has to be. Set. Um, just to add. I think there could be some games that can start in the 12th, but not every game will be affected by the peace cup. So uh, I think the target is to start in the 12th, and, and we'll make sure the schedules will allow for us uh, uh, and the clubs uh, allow the players to participate in the peace cup. Roy. Question is regarding global participation in the Singapore Cup. And, uh, as in the past, we will support uh, any club's participation in the uh, Singapore Cup, so adjustments will be made accordingly. That means October 1 quarter. That means October 1 quarter. Okay. That is the media. Anybody else have a question? Roy, good, Bob, Carl, everybody okay? All right, guys. That was the media. Thank you so much for for coming. Well, we're going to move the table so we're going to allow for some photos to be snapped with the board members and later on with the team officials and players. So we're just going to move this. All right, guys. The fifth edition of the UFL Cup is going to get underway very soon. It's been a lot of drama involved with the competition, and we're happy. You guys can all make it to the UFL Cup. Draw, thank you so much for, for taking time out to be here today. I wish you all good luck in your endeavors in the UFL Cup. We'll see you guys very, very soon.